Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. So join me to talk about Chagas disease, the kissing bug, and her survey in Oklahoma is Kelly Allen, Ph.D. Dr. Allen is an assistant professor of veterinary parasitology at Oklahoma State University Center for Veterinary Health Sciences. Dr. Allen, welcome to the show, ma'am. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, let's start out with uh, a little primer. Um, What is the agent of Chagas disease? And what pathology is associated with it? So the agent of Chagas disease is a protozoan parasite that's called Trypanosoma cruzi. And Trypanosoma cruzi causes Chagas disease, that condition, which is named after the Brazilian physician, Dr. Carlos Chagas, who first described the parasite in the early 1900s in the blood of some human patients. As far as the pathology that's associated with trypanosoma cruzi infection, it depends on which strain we're talking about. So there are a number, or seven in fact, different strains or lineages, and they're all very genetically similar, but they are different. And so depending on which strain we're talking about, that determines which hosts are infected and potentially which pathology is associated with infection. Now, part of your study is looking at uh, T. cruzi infection in domestic dogs. How does the parasite manifest itself uh, in animals? So um, the disease in dogs and humans is very similar. Trypanosoma cruzi is not picky in the animals that it infects. It infects a wide variety of animals. There's a number of reservoir hosts in the United States, so skunks, armadillos, raccoons, rodents. Uh, So it can infect a variety of different animals, but usually disease is occurring in humans and dogs. And it's very similar, as I mentioned. And there are three different stages that are associated with Chagas disease. And predominantly, when we're talking about humans and dogs, the parasite is uh, affecting the heart. So there are cardiac manifestations, potentially, in the chronic stage of disease. So usually what happens is the individual, so human or dog, will become infected with the parasite, Trypanosoma cruzi. And then shortly after, about a couple of weeks, the individual will go into what we call the acute stage of infection. And this lasts about two months. Now, this stage of infection can be very severe. It can be fatal. However, uh, in general, it's very, very subtle and not associated with many clinical signs at all. In fact, in human medicine, uh, we describe them as flu-like symptoms. And dogs often don't have any overt clinical signs. And so this lasts about two months where the parasite is there, it's replicating, it's disseminating. In fact, if you were to take blood from an individual, you could spot it onto a microscope slide, look at it under a microscope, and easily see the parasite. But again, usually it's not associated with clinical signs. This lasts about two months. Now, the individual can then go directly into a chronic stage that has clinical signs, Um, or they can go into a chronic stage that does not have clinical signs, and we call that the latent stage. Okay, so the parasite's there, so the individual is infected, but they don't have clinical signs, and this happens in about 70% of individuals. Um, And they can stay this way lifelong, and a lot of times they do. But about 30% of individuals, this is humans and dogs again, Over time, they will go into that chronic stage of disease where there will be uh, clinical signs and cardiac manifestations, again, about 30% of of individuals. Um, And it's the the parasite, uh, it's causing damage to the heart, it's the body's response, uh, immune response to the parasite. Um, The parasite causes the heart not to um, beat uh, rhythmically, so there'll be um, disruption with that, so arrhythmia, and over time, the destruction will just lead to eventually um, 
enough damage that the heart can't compensate and there will be heart failure. Okay, now it's primarily transmitted to humans and animals via the vector commonly known as the kissing bug. Uh, Dr. Allen, what is the kissing bug? Okay, so the kissing bug is a type of insect that is in the same family of some other very commonly known insects called assassin bugs. Assassin bugs are predatory, and they, but they feed on other insects. Okay, so a kissing bug is very similar to that, but they're in their own subfamily. And they're different because they don't feed on other insects. They instead feed on the blood of animals. And so they're blood feeders. They'll go take a blood meal. It takes them about 15 to 20 minutes to feed. And they'll completely engorge their abdomen with uh, the blood of a variety of different animals. They're not really choosy on what they feed on. And they're called kissing bugs because typically with humans, if you think about it, most people sleep with a blanket or a sheet and their face is exposed. And like some other arthropods, kissing bugs are thought to uh, respond to carbon dioxide and lets them know that a host is nearby. So we're breathing in oxygen, breathing out carbon dioxide. Kissing bugs will be attracted to that and tend to feed on the face. So that's why they're called uh, kissing bugs. Now, but uh, the kissing bug is not the only way uh, a human, or I imagine a dog also, uh, that can contract chagas. Are there other ways? There certainly are. Um, I will say that it's not that the, the role of the kissing bug is, that's predominantly how infections do occur, is when the kissing bug is involved. But uh, there are some other ways. For example, um, Chagas disease has been linked with um, foodborne outbreaks uh, in Latin America. So um, uh, various fruit will be contaminated with kissing bug feces that has the parasite in it. So the parasite's in the digestive tract of the kissing bug. And so the, the uh, various vegetation or fruit will be contaminated with kissing bug feces that has the parasite. And then um, people will ingest that fruit or fruit juice and also ingest the parasite and become infected that way. Um, again, that's been linked with some outbreaks. Um, as far as animals go, there's some thought that if they actually ingest an infected kissing bug, they can become infected that way. So that may play a role in uh, how dogs become infected also. Um, and then uh, transplacental transmission is documented where uh, an infected pregnant woman, the parasite will then transmit to the infant in the uterus. And then medically, there's um, transmission that's occurred uh, through blood donation, organ donation, and needle inoculation. So there are a variety of ways uh, that Trypanosoma cruzi can be transmitted. But again, um, most commonly, it's thought to be due to that transmission from the kissing bug. And again, it's not through the blood feeding of the kissing bug. It's uh, the fact that the parasite is in the digestive tract of the kissing bug, and the kissing bug defecates, and the individual is exposed to the parasite and the feces from the kissing bug. Right. Now, Chagas is primarily a disease of Central and South America, um, but it's also found here in the States. Um, what do we know about that? Yeah, so the the fact is Trypanosoma cruzi is is prevalent in wildlife in the United States. Okay, so Trypanosoma cruzi has been here certainly. Um and there we have a number of kissing bug species that have been shown to uh vector uh Trypanosoma cruzi. But fortunately, it's relatively rare in humans. Um and that's because Again, kind of that, it's not a direct transmission from the kissing bug, it's a two-step kind of process. So the kissing bug takes a blood meal and then must defecate and then the parasite must find its way somehow into the host that way. That being said, yes, it is present in the United States. Um, it's, there's an estimated 300,000 or so people in the United States that have Chagas disease, but that's an estimation. Um, and the majority are thought to be ha have been infected in Latin America. So they come from Latin America or they come, they visit Latin America and be become infected there and then 
come back, um, and then years later discover they're infected with Chagas disease. So um, instances of travel, but there have been locally acquired infections in humans documented in the United States, and locally acquired infections in dogs in the United States is very well described. Mm -hmm. So yes, the answer is yes, we have Chagas disease in the United States, but I think it's gaining a little bit more awareness. And in fact, in 2018, the American Heart Association and the Inter-American Society of Cardiology issued a statement on Chagas disease uh, to human health care providers, urging them that this needs to be on their radar and that it's not just kind of limited to Latin America. It's found just because of the globalization, all of the travel, it should be on everybody's radar. Sure. Well, before we get into your work at OSU, um, I'd like to get your thoughts on what I mentioned in the intro about the first confirmed bug in Delaware. It really got a lot of media attention. Um, what does this mean to you? So honestly, this doesn't surprise me one bit. Um, the thing is, is there are um, there were kissing bugs that were discovered in, in states that are adjacent to Delaware. And there's also, um, we know that some arthropods are expanding in distribution, and that could include the kissing bug. Uh, it's also possible that the kissing bugs um, have been there in Delaware. It's just they've only just now been discovered. The, fact, the thing is, is kissing bugs are so, so stealthy. They are very good hiders. They're very difficult to find, even when you're actively looking for them. So it wouldn't surprise me if they've been there for some time and they're just now um, being known. It's just now being known. Okay. All right. So in Oklahoma, you're conducting some research on Trypanosoma cruzi and the kissing bug in your state. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Allen, can you describe the research and your findings to date? Yeah. So um, we were interested in looking at um, – well, potentially trying to get a feel for what the prevalence of Trypanosoma cruzi and kissing bugs is in Oklahoma, uh, because we know that there's been a lot of work done in Texas, and Texas has a very high prevalence of Trypanosoma cruzi and kissing bugs. And the fact is, Oklahoma is not that far away from Texas, right? So that's why we were um, interested in doing that. And so people are submitting bugs to us or submitting them to our um, entomology diagnostic lab and then we test those kissing bugs. We extract them for DNA and then we test them for Trypanosoma cruzi, a particular gene sequence. And they all, we also test the kissing bugs for potentially, sometimes we can detect, um, the blood meal identity of the animal that the kissing bug recently fed on. Yeah. And um, as far as the data that we've gathered so far, data are still very preliminary, so I hesitate to um, estimate prevalence. I will say that we are finding Trypanosoma cruzi in um, a portion of bugs here in Oklahoma. But again, I don't want to comment on the prevalence because I think the data are too prelim preliminary, but we have tested bugs from across Oklahoma and found bugs uh, numerous bugs in seven different counties in Oklahoma that are positive. Mm -hmm. And as far as what they're feeding on, um, it's been a few different animal species, uh, which we expected, you know, some raccoon, rodent blood, uh, but we've also detected canine blood, so dog blood and human blood. And, the, and, this, and, survey on, and this survey is ongoing. The survey is ongoing, so if anybody would like to learn more about what we're doing, they can visit our website or email us at kissingbugandtell at gmail.com. Okay, excellent. And I'll go ahead and link to the website uh, when I publish the podcast later. And uh, any final thoughts, Dr. Allen? Yeah, um, I first just want to thank you again for having me on sure. um, to help spread awareness about this um, disease, which I think is um, emerging and is finally some, gaining some recognition. But I do want to, to tell people that there's no reason for panic. Uh, the fact is this parasite has been present in the United States for a long time. We're only just now sort of paying more attention to it. Um, I also, uh, that being said, I, I do want 
you know, to people to know how infection can occur because um, they should be uh, aware they they have that right to know how it happens. But um, really, there's no um, cause for panic because again, infection risk is is minimal because it is kind of a two step process. Um, but if you are ever concerned. Uh, about potentially being exposed, whether you've traveled or whether you think you've been bitten by a kissing bug, um, please consult your uh, healthcare provider and they can assess your risk and potentially um, conduct some further testing to rule out infection. Well, very good. And I want to thank you, Dr. Kelly Allen, for your time and your expertise. Okay, thank you very much.